Welcome to Enjoying Everyday Life with New York Times bestselling author, Joyce Meyer. On today's program, Joyce will be teaching from her series, Put First Things First. Our number one priority in life should be spending time with God. When and how we spend time with Him looks different for everyone. An easy place to start is waking up and simply saying, Good morning, God. Now, here's Joyce with today's teaching. The way we drove into our office was the same way every day. And uh, yet, for some reason, we had never seen this sign. Or I'd, I'd seen it, but I never paid much attention to it. There was a little sign over here on the side of the road as we would drive by, and it had an arrow pointing up, 55 acres for sale. Well, one day I said to Dave, I wonder what that is. You know, it's interesting how God can blind you to something if it's not the right time. And he can open your eyes to something when it is the right time. And so we went up and looked at the 55 acres and man, this would just be, this would be awesome, but there's no telling us what this would cost. And we only had a certain amount of money saved toward this. And so we found the lady who, who owned it and um, somebody else had offered her the same amount of money that we felt like we could offer a couple of years prior to that and she wouldn't sell it to them. But God gave us favor with her and she sold it to us for that exact amount of money. And that's where our property sits today and it's how many thousand square feet? 150,000 square feet in the office building and 68,000 square feet in the distribution center. So the, uh, the 30,000 square feet wouldn't have lasted very long. See, God shut that door because he knew more than we did about what was gonna happen in the future. If we would have bought that church or that building, we would have been in trouble. Well, God hid that property from us even though we drove right by it every day. Didn't see it. He hid it from us until it was the right time for us to do that. So please, if you're waiting on an answer from God, don't get frustrated because God's not answering you yet. He may not be early, but he won't be late. Come on. When the time is right, and every time the devil tries to discourage you, just open your mouth and say, God will speak to me at the right time. He is not gonna leave me abandoned. God is gonna show me what to do when I need to do it. And you know, I especially feel bad sometimes for young people getting out of high school or getting out of college because everybody wants to ask that person, what are you gonna do with your life? I mean, come on, some of us are, some of you are 50 and you still know what you're doing with your life. You know, you're still trying to figure it out. And we're, we're badgering these 18 year old and 21, 22 year olds, you know, what are you gonna do with you? Don't you imagine they get fed up with having to try to answer that question? I mean, I guess it's okay to ask it, but if, if they say, I don't know yet, don't, don't bug them about it. Just, you know, who, who cares? Maybe, you're, maybe you spend the first 10 years doing stuff that has nothing to do with what you're gonna ultimately do, but you will get experience every place that you are that will ultimately be used in your life somewhere down the road. We're all just in too big of a hurry to know everything. And we don't always need to know everything all the time. All right, the most common way that God speaks to us is through his word. And I'll just tell you right now, if you ever wanna learn how to accurately hear from God, you have to know the word of God. If you're not gonna be a student of the word, then you're gonna get deceived and you're gonna get yourself in trouble. The word of God will rise up in you when you're about to make mistakes, when you're getting ready to go in a wrong direction, when you're getting ready to do the wrong thing, when you're treating somebody in a way that's not pleasing to God, the word of God will rise up in you. So you have to make a commitment to be a student of the word of God. I would love to be able to see every single person spend some time in the Word every day. Even if it can't be a long, long time, spend some time in the Word of God every day. And you'll be amazed the time that you would have to listen to the Word if you 
really started thinking about, e even if you've got, you're, you're playing a CD or something, and you're not in a position where you can listen to every single word intently, have that word going, and if you have to listen to that thing four or five times before you get all of it, it's better to do that than to just have wasted brain space where you're just, you know, <laughs> sitting around getting off into thinking about something that's not gonna bear any good fruit for you anyway. Love the Word of God. The weapons of our warfare are not physical weapons of flesh and blood. Our weapons are divinely powerful for the destruction of fortresses or strongholds. We are destroying sophisticated arguments and every exalted and proud thing that, that sets itself up against the true knowledge of God. And we are taking every thought and purpose captive under the obedience of Jesus Christ. In other words, there are very many voices in the world today, natural ones and supernatural ones that may try to speak to us. But if we know the truth of God's word, we will recognize the ones that are right according to the word of God and the ones that are wrong according to the word of God. Jesus said, if you continue in my word, then you will know the truth and the truth will make you free. Now, I believe that one of the main ways we hear from God, and I know this to be a fact for Dave and I, is just through wisdom and common sense. Dave and I, and I, this is not said in a bragging way, it's just a fact. We, we just have a lot of common sense. And you know, common sense can be more valuable to you than a whole bunch of education sometimes. You know, there's so many things that we don't need to hear from God on. It's just common sense. You don't spend more money than you make. You don't go out and buy a new car when you're really not gonna be able to afford to make the payment and it's just gonna put pressure on you. I had a situation one time where I had saved up a little bit of money. I think I had $100 or $130, something like that. And I uh, was going out shopping and I needed a new watch. And the guy in the jewelry store showed me the new watch. You know, I have finally figured out, and no offense if you're a jeweler, there's something in those lights <laughs> in the jewelry cases. And I can just tell you, it never looks as good when you get it home. <laughs> Has anybody else noticed that? I mean, there's something they do. One of the places where I, where I buy my clothes, I finally figured out, and this girl's a friend of mine, I bought clothes from her for over 30 years, but you can slant a mirror a certain way, <laughs> and it makes you look 10 pounds lighter. And I have bought so many clothes there and got home and thought, I looked skinnier in this <laughs> when I was at the store. So the guy was telling me, buy this watch now, give you a discount. He was pressuring me. Well, you know, first of all, God doesn't pressure you to make decisions. Yeah. Amen? When somebody starts pressuring you to make a decision, you might as well say right now, this is not God. So... I said, well, I'm gonna think about it. I'll walk down the mall and think about it, let you know. Well, I got down the mall a little bit further and I saw a suit that I liked. And Dave was encouraging. He said, you should try that on. That'll really look good on you. So I went and I tried it on. That was gonna take all my money too. So I had the watch down here that I wanted. I had the dress that I wanted. Didn't have the money for both. What a dilemma. What am I gonna do? So I took another walk. You know, that's the waiting part. And you know what I decided? More than I wanted either one, I wanted to keep my money. <laughs> because I, di I didn't want to be broke. I wanted to have the money if I wanted to go to lunch, to go to lunch, or if, you know, if I wanted to buy something small, to buy something small. So please take a little more time. You know, when you're, if you're going to buy something, especially something that's expensive, sleep on it. Get away from the jewelry case. Get away from the shiny showroom where the cars are all polished and, you know, look like the most beautiful thing you've ever seen. Keep in mind what it's going to look like after it's full of McDonald's wrappers and <laughs> Starbucks cups and it's got mud on it and a few nicks on the doors from people slamming their car door into yours. And then ask yourself, when it's like that, am I going to be willing to pay $700 a month for seven years? to own it. Amen? Amen? Come on, good common sense stuff here.
You know, you really don't need a word from God about buying something that you already know you can't afford. That's, that's not something you need a confirmation on or a word on or anything else. I, but this is my definition of wisdom. It, it's just mine. I made it up, but I love it. I believe that wisdom is doing now what you'll be satisfied with later on. I really like that definition. It's like we do so many things in the heat of the moment, and then later we're under pressure because we've done that thing. And so we need to do now what we're going to be happy with later on. Another way that God can speak to us very clearly is through our past mistakes. So let me tell you something. Maybe you've made some mistakes in your life, but do yourself a favor and get some benefit out of them other than just sitting around feeling guilty that you did it. Proverbs 3.11. My son, do not reject or take lightly the discipline of the Lord. Learn from your mistakes and the testing that comes from his correction through discipline. Isn't that good? Learn from your mistakes. One thing's for sure about making a mistake. If you don't learn anything else, you learn not to do that again. That's why sometimes it's wise if you don't know what you're supposed to do with your life or something to just try a few things because if something doesn't work, at least you know that's not it. But you know what we have to do? We have to get over this abnormal fear of being wrong. We just can't stand to think that we might be wrong or that we might have to tell somebody that, that we were wrong. You know, we go around telling people, oh, God said this and God said that. And then when it becomes obvious that God didn't say it because it's not working, then we make another mistake by trying to cover it up with some other excuse. I don't know why we can't just go back to people and say, you know what? I thought it was God, but it wasn't. Everybody goes through that. And we'd be a lot better off if we'd just be honest with each other about stuff like that. We learn so much from life's experiences. My goodness, when you're 20, you think you know everything. <laughs> and finally, by the time you're 40, you figured out you don't know anything. <laughs> and that's at the point in life where you might be able to start learning something. Because when you think you know everything, you can't learn everything. Amen? Amen. God speaks to us through our own thoughts. And I love this. Now, that doesn't mean that every thought you have is God. But it's more like one of those anointed thoughts. It's just something you just, it, it fits. You just, you feel good about it. You, it. It feels right. Proverbs 16, 3 says, roll your works upon the Lord, commit and trust him wholly to him. He will cause your thoughts to become agreeable to his will. And so shall your plans be established and succeed. Isn't that good? So sometimes, see, here, I hope you're seeing that a lot of this is just real, not like this soupy, float around on a cloud, supernatural, ooh, that was God. People often tell Joyce they don't know how to hear from God, and today's resource offering will help with that. Learning to Hear God's Voice is a four-week Bible study designed to help hear His voice clearer than ever before. You'll also receive the Everyday Life Psalms and Proverbs Platinum Edition to gain even more wisdom. Contact us now to receive this package for your gift of $30 or more. Order now at JoyceMeyer.org or call toll-free at 1-800-789-0089. The Bible, our instruction book for life. Spending time in God's Word will change our lives, but consistent and effective study can at times be challenging. That's one reason why Joyce is here to help. At JoyceMeyer.org slash Bible study, you'll find ways to make your study time come to life with helpful resources, study suggestions, and encouragement from Joyce. Get the most you can out of your time studying God's Word with everyday study. Sign up today at JoyceMeyer.org slash Bible study. Thanks again for listening to Enjoying Everyday Life. Joyce Meyer Ministries' mission is to share Christ and love people. Together, we can do so much more.